everyone, it's Annabelle. Welcome back to my channel. And in today's video, I thought we'd do an update that you guys have been requesting for a while. And I'm sorry I haven't got round to it, but I really wanted to give a full perspective on how I felt about the situation. And that is on my Miltoniopsis and their new setup in inorganic media. I transitioned these quite some time ago, um, back at the end of last year, into various mixes that contained pumice, lecker and synthic because I found that synthic um, very closely replicated sphagnum moss and in my environment, in my climate, straight semi-hydro in previous attempts was fairly disastrous for Miltoniopsis because I had issues with the dry top layer just killing new root tips. So I, um, I nearly killed a few Miltoniopsis when I first started trying it. And I, then I pretty quickly switched off and was like, no, it doesn't work. Um, then I found these new inorganic medias and various ways that I've kind of been mixing inorganic medias to give better moisture distribution through to the top layer. And I found Synthic and I gave it a try and I was like, well, I actually think that this could work really well. So I trialed it out for a while. And you can check out my previous videos on me trialing the Synthic and putting the Miltoniopsis into it and kind of my initial switch over to the Oncidiums. Um, and then I thought I would leave it for a while because with Miltoniopsis, you can initially think something is quite good because they're quite slow to react and they're a little bit fussy. And then it can actually be a bit of a disaster when different weather hits or um you start getting rot issues so I really wanted to leave it not do like an initial update that people might see and think oh this is amazing and then me another month later say oh actually it rotted all my Miltoniopsis um so I really wanted to give like a balanced perspective on how they were really doing in it which is why I've left it a while for the update and I do apologize for that but I thought I'd do an update now since obviously um many of us will be at home more I myself at the moment am still going into work, but I think that the hospital is completely off limits to us. We're in a building adjacent to the hospital. Um, I work in research, I'm doing a PhD in a lab near the hospital. So um, I'm still going in at the moment, but I can definitely foresee that um, that may be limited and I may be spending more time at home. And I know that a lot of people in different countries are already kind of in quarantine situations and um, see we're all going to be having a bit more time with our orchids, which is fantastic. And I don't want to comment too much more on that situation, but we've got to look at the positives. And the positives are that we get to spend more time with orchids. So I'm going to do an update on my Miltoniopsis now for you guys. And hopefully you find that interesting and that kind of um, perks up the situation a little bit because they're actually doing really well. So as you can see, I've got a Miltoniopsis in front of us, which I've shown in my recent What's in Bloom video which is an Eric Young Foundation hybrid. Really, really beautiful flowers. And I said at the time in my What's in Bloom video that I wasn't sure how fragrant it was. Miltoniopsis are funny. They can take a few weeks for the fragrance to really start to come out and it comes out, I would say, peaking about 11 a.m. and then fading towards the afternoon or late afternoon. This has a beautiful, beautiful lemony fragrance. Absolutely love it. As you can see, the flowers are just huge and we've got loads and loads of flowers on this particular hybrid. My others are all spiking and I'm also going to include my Nelly Islas as a Miltoniopsis related hybrid in this update. So with that said, let's get started. So firstly, I'm going to talk you through this Eric Young Foundation Hybrid. Most of the ones that I'm going to show you today are Eric Young Foundation Hybrids, because um, that makes up most of my collection. I bought a um, combination of six Eric Young Foundation Miltoniopsis after I'd been keeping Miltoniopsis for a while and knew that I could take care of them properly. Um, so I kind of treated myself to this pack of six that Burnham Nurseries were doing, and this was last March, so this is a year ago. So um, these guys are in various mixes of pumice, lecker and synthic. I'll just get you up close to these guys. I'm just going to bring you in or bring the orchid closer for a little look at the root system. So as you can see, it's adapted really well to the mix and it's, they seem to cluster the roots and branch the roots more in these areas with more synthic. Initially, I potted them into more synthic heavy mixes and I had one Miltoniopsis start to rot on one of the back bulbs that was a little bit buried because it was staying a little bit soggy at the base. So I chose to readjust their mixes, putting more pumice in for aeration in many of them. And that seems to have worked well. They've still got the pebble top layer, which I've just find, I don't necessarily need it with this much synthic in, the, um, the pot stays very moist. 
However, the pebbles on the top actually seem to stop the um, orchid staying too wet around the base, which is something that I found really helpful with Miltoniopsis and obviously stopping rot issues. So um, as you can see, Miltoniopsis obviously get quite big and will take up a lot of room, but they definitely reward us with wonderful fragrance and completely magnificent flowers. So that is my first Eric Young Foundation Hybrid. And the reason I'm not actually saying the names for the Eric Young Foundation Hybrids is they came in little pots with rock wool and I repotted them all at once to get them out of the rock wool. And I mixed up the tags, I think, because one rebloomed and I knew it wasn't what it said on the tag. So I'm not totally confident until these guys have all rebloomed that I've got the IDs correct. So I'm not saying names until I've got that all sorted um, and looked through because I've got a few records with pictures of the blooms. So this is my second Eric Young Foundation Miltonia Officers Hybrid and this is a bit of an awkward one because it does tend to climb in the pot. I know what this one is because it has this um, tendency to get little pink patches on the leaves, um, particularly on newer growth, newer leaves. So um, this one is a beautiful, beautiful lavender, purpley pink hybrid with a, quite a dark centre, which is really stunning. I think Roger from Roger's Orchids also has the same hybrid. Um, so this one's doing really well. It's actually like two or three plants in the pot, I discovered when I took it out, but uh, that's absolutely fine. So you can see you've got quite a lot of new growth at the moment. No spikes on this one. This one was a little bit later to develop, but lots of new growth. And we're just going to take a look at the root system. So as you can see, it's adapted very well to the new ooh, inorganic mix. Um, a few of the old roots that were in the sphagnum, pure sphagnum mix have died off. So there was obviously a bit of an adjustment period. But can you see those new little root tips that are just coming through from one of the um, new growths? So they are tunneling down from one of the new growths there and getting through and going into the synthetic. So that old root system is rapidly going to be replaced. Um, old roots do have a lifespan and you often find this when you repot orchids. Any, I think it's like, it's a various um, variables that affect it. So like new pH of the media, if they're adapted to a certain pH, I find that sometimes um, they die off. If they're adapted to certain airiness, um, moisture levels, they can die off. They adapt specifically to certain environments and this is very flexible and it's very orchid dependent. Um, but sometimes that you'll just find that even for no apparent reason, like my cocoa peat transitions to sphagnum, some of the old, old roots would die off still, even though that you would think that would be very similar. So yeah, we've got good roots on it, nice root system going down to the pot. I'm really happy with its progress, no crinkling of the leaves and lots of new growths being put out by that one. So I'm very happy with that. I'm just gonna check we've got about six new growths on that one so that one's doing very well hopefully those new growths will spike because the ones that were growing at the time of the repot didn't and next up another eric young foundation hybrid i think i've picked there's one that's not for these um but yeah most of my collection is eric young foundation hybrid this one says it is la fugural um, not sure if it is, but this one again, you can see it's got this awkward climbing habit. So we've got a new growth coming out of there. Um, yeah, doing well. No leaf crinkling or um, pseudobulb shriveling. Quite a good root system, not quite as extensive as some of the previous ones. But I think that that's just, a, it's a smaller plant. So hopefully as we get, oh no, I've just turned it round and um, found all of the roots so they're all apparently behind that label and just coming down there so it's doing well as you can see um, climbing habit could potentially be a problem might have to remove some of these pebbles from the top layer if they do struggle to get down um, and something that i'm going to do is just to remove this outer leaf because you can see already it's tried to produce a root just there you can see the mark against the um outer leaf of the previous bulb. So we're just going to take that off. Um, just to allow the new roots that this new growth makes to actually travel down into the media. As you can see, it has a, had a bit of difficulty there. And we've got another one doing exactly the same thing. 
but it's got two layers of leaves to get through. So I might do a little bit of surgery and just cut this bit of the leaf away because I don't want to remove loads of leaves from this old bulb just to help those roots get down into the media. Next I'm going to show you the Oncidopsis Nelly Isla. So this is a hybrid between Miltoniopsis and Oncidium. And this one is, I've got three Nelly Islas. This is probably the most representative out of the two. I have one that's producing absolutely loads of roots and one that's in a bigger pot that I can't necessarily see the roots yet, but that could just be because it's in a bigger pot. And this is a Swiss Beauty version, which is the original version. And there is, I do also have a red velvet version. It's got three new growths here. So they're at the stage where they should be spiking soon and quite a lot of new roots going down into the media. You can obviously see these are all new since the repot. So it's doing very well. You can also see that they are getting through the top layer down into the media. So that's not causing any issues. Next, I'm gonna show you another Miltoniopsis. This one is not an Eric Young Foundation hybrid. So this is a hybrid, um, it's called the Herr Alexander or Hel Herr Alexandra, um, so very big plant as you can see and it does have some spikes starting so I've got um, a spike in here, also got a spike in here, you can see that, try and get some better lighting on that like in there starting as well so I think just a very baby start of a spike in one of the new growths here but that will take a little bit longer to mature so two big spikes and then one smaller spike for the looks of it so three spikes in total um, so that's the hair Alexander and this is the first one that I put into more of a synthetic heavy mix um, you can actually see it's like spearing through the synthic on the top there that is poking up. Um, let's just take a look at the root system. So this one's yeah more of a synthic heavy mix. Uh, seems to be doing well anyway. Lots and lots of roots in the pot and a little bit of leaf crinkling just here where it you can this pretty much track the progress of it from um, the leaf crinkle. So that is where it first went into the new mix there. So yeah, it's doing well though. Another one that I think I should update you guys on is the Miltoniopsis Sun Glow Amazing because this one I actually did forget to and repot with you guys on camera and I feel like that is much more useful information because you can go back and see the starting point of that video if you want and in that video I also talk about things that I do um, that I feel speed up my success in converting new orchids and Miltoniopsis into your kind of home environment and the things that I do to convert so you can go and check that video if you want to see kind of the starting point of this Miltoniopsis. It's, um, it came as quite a big vigorous plant with a lot of new growths and as you can see it is now a very big vigorous plant with many many new growths. Um, just show you the root system now and obviously you can go back and check it then. So unfortunately this one does have a few leaf crinkles on new growths because I keep accidentally letting the reservoir dry out and it is still it's dried out again so I need to top that up. Because this one has so many roots, it's it actually extremely thirsty and quite difficult to keep up with. Um, so I need to get into the habit, I think, of topping up the reservoir much more fully in summer to get this one through. But yeah, it's converted really, really well. You can see it's got a really good root system. It's doing really well. More of a synthetic heavy mix. And even then it's um, drinking so fast. And synthetic retains a lot more moisture than sphagnum moss even. So... Yeah, that's how thirsty this one is, but you can kind of understand that looking at the size of the plant and the root system. So that is the Miltoniopsis Sunglo Amazing, which has a wonderful, wonderful um, white flower with a yellow center, which is just really beautiful and stunning and pure. So lots of new growths on that Miltoniopsis. Then I'm just going to talk to you briefly about two that I actually put into Ceramis, just as a little experiment. Um, so they are both in these like 
outer masks and then the inner mask fits very snugly. So I've already taken this one out. Um, you can see, oh, awkward. It's um, actually pushing all the pebbles out of the top where the roots have like displaced in the media there. Um, Self-watering with a mixture of ceramis, pumice and leca in that. So it seems to be doing very well in that mix actually. So I think that that's also a viable alternative. And you can see the size progression on this newer growth that is produced in this mix compared to the older growth. So quite a large difference in size there and a good vigorous root system. That one will actually need repotting soon, I think. Um, so that is that one. Okay, so that is a brief update on my Miltoniopsis orchids and the Nelly Islas in their inorganic mixes in self-watering systems with combinations of pumice, lacquer and synthic or even with um, ceramis and pumice and lacquer. They all seem to be doing very well and I'm very pleased with how they're responding. I kind of initially didn't think that I'd be able to grow them in inorganic mixes, but I think finding more moisture retentive inorganic alternatives has really kind of opened up options with what I can grow in these kind of self-watering inorganic systems. And I'm really happy with how the Miltoniopsis are responding to this. So a little bit about how I keep them and the culture. Miltoniopsis are cloud forest growers, um, but I would say the hybrids that we have in cultivation are actually more sort of intermediate growers. So the species Miltoniopsis will be high elevation, predominantly cool growers, except for one which I think is the Rosely, um, Rosel Rosely, something like that. It, um, that one is supposed to be a warmer grower. But for the most part, Miltoniopsis are high elevation, cloud forest growers from Colombia, Ecuador, Peru. They're going to be growing at very high elevations, shady, very high humidity and cooler temperatures. So they're going to be adapted to um, those conditions and not necessarily at holding on to water very well, as you can see by the very kind of papery leaves. Um, so they are prone to lose water very quickly and when we take those species and put them in a home environment they can be very tricky because they are going to be losing lots of water and because the humidity in the home is not kind of ideal for them they're also very prone to rot because in nature they would be growing in kind of cloud forests and lots and lots of air movement as well as this humidity um, so if we put them in very soggy mixes with very little air movement in cooler temperatures they're very prone to rotting um, I don't, I only own one Miltoniopsis species and most of mine are hybrids that we have in cultivation and I find these very, very forgiving um, compared to the Miltoniopsis phalaenopsis species that I do have. Um, that one I only got recently so it's still establishing so I can't really comment too much on its care whereas I can because I've for these because I've kept them for quite a long time now so I can kind of comment more on these guys. So. I'm just going to say how I grow the Miltoniopsis hybrids that I have. They're in my orchid room, so I don't keep them in my cool corner or anything with the Mastavalias. So temperatures are a minimum of 18 degrees Celsius at night in winters. Um, this is because I also keep Phalaenopsis and Vandas in the same grow room as them, so they, they need to be kept warm uh, for that. So the Phalaenopsis and Vandas in semi-hydro can't go to low temperatures that these could maybe take. So minimums 18 degrees Celsius night and winter and average daytime temperatures in winter is probably 23 to 25 degrees Celsius. They do fine in that. Um, in summer, my temperatures tend to be more sort of 20 degrees Celsius plus in at nighttime and um, 25 to 30 degrees Celsius daytime probably. So. Last summer I did actually get up to about 35 degrees Celsius in the grow room. I got around this, I was keeping them in um, self-watering systems in sphagnum. They didn't really blink at it, they didn't seem to skip a beat. You can see my um, summer update video from last year in the corner and in the description down below, I'll also link it. They, they did fine. So I find these very forgiving. I think the key is to provide enough moisture around the root zone to keep them going, to stop them losing too much through transpiration through the leaves, because obviously there's that gradient where they're losing water through the leaves, which causes them to kind of suck water up through the roots. So they do need that differential to be able to um, function. And they are adapted to high humidity environments, which means they're almost adapted to lose water because they have to lose water through the leaves to be able to take it up through the roots. It's kind of how transpiration works. So um, 
species in cultivation may struggle. Hybrids, I don't find to struggle as much. I think they must use a lot of the warm growing Miltoniopsis parent in these hybrids to make them more vigorous and resilient to indoor growing. Um, so I think as long as you keep them hydrated enough to balance that water loss when growing them at ho low humidity, and for reference, my humidity in summer tends to be around 50% humidity. In winter, it's sort of more around 70% humidity, and just how the UK is, we get a lot of rain in winter, very damp and humid. Um, but yeah, in summer, my, temp my humidity does go down, um, and they don't seem to mind that. So another thing that I would say is when you're giving them lots of moisture through the roots, balance that with aeration and don't let the bottom of the plant sit in like a soggy media because like I found with the synthic to start with I had one Miltoniopsis that um, started to rot on a back bulb that was buried so remove that stop the rot split it up it's doing absolutely fine now but synthic holds a lot more moisture than sphagnum so using it I've had to use it more sparingly with other inorganic materials to kind of balance that um, I think that might be where their reputation for rot comes from, also just from weak commercially produced hybrids potentially. Um, and also when you buy them in garden centres, they often only come with one bulb. You're going to really struggle. Um, get one with as many bulbs as you can. Even if it's got less flowers, you will have a much easier time of transitioning it to your environment because that transition period is the bit that they struggle at, I think. And once you've got them set up in your home and got them transitioned, they're really vigorous or at least in my experience. So that's all I can really say on their cultivation because that's how I keep them and they, they do well. And I've transitioned them from my self-watering with sphagnum and perlite to this inorganic media and they're still doing well and I haven't lost any. So I find that really interesting and um, I hope that this video has been useful and you've enjoyed the update. I hope everyone out there stays safe with obviously the um, times that we're having at the moment with COVID-19. And I want all you guys to stay safe. My thoughts and good wishes are with you all. I hope you've enjoyed this video and found it interesting and informative with regards to the Miltoniopsis care and the update. And thank you so much for watching today. If you did enjoy this video, then don't forget to give it a like or subscribe to my channel for more regular orchid updates. And I will see you guys all later. Bye.